prepare for arrival. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. In a sense, the entire history of Israel is a preparation for the arrival of Jesus, in whom all history is fulfilled. God's Old Testament people knew something about preparation and anticipation. God prepared Abraham to be the patriarch of his people. God prepared Moses to lead the sons of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. God prepared David to be anointed as king of the house and lineage of David. God prepared the people in Isaiah's day to recognize that we don't prepare the way for God, he will come in his own way. But come he will. As the last of the Old Testament prophets, John the Baptist did what God had said. He went into the wilderness and proclaimed that the kingdom of God in Christ was at hand. We begin with a sense of quiet waiting, of turning away from all our efforts to prepare the way, to a time of listening to God's word and his way. Rather than focusing on our preparation, our attention turns to the one who is arriving. This is the Messiah promised of old the Advent King of the Kingdom of God, David's Son and David's Lord, announcing the arrival of the Savior of the Word. God has come in Christ. Let us pray. Lord, make us ready this Advent. Prepare us for the way of the Lord. We are listening to your word as you announce the arrival of your Savior, who is Christ, the Lord. Amen.
to welcome Jesus, descendant of the family of King David. Help us, O oh God, to welcome Jesus as befits a king. In all this, remember how critical the moment is. It is time for you to wake out of sleep, for deliverance is nearer to us now than it was when we first believed. It is far on in the night. Day is near. Let us therefore throw off the deeds of darkness and put on our armor as soldiers of the light. Let us behave with decency as befits the day. No reveling or drunkenness, no debauchery or vice, no quarrels or jealousies. Let Jesus Christ himself be the armor that you wear. Give no more thought to satisfying the bodily appetites. We light this first candle as a sign of our desire to welcome Jesus into a community constituted by love and a commitment to justice. Help us to cooperate with you, our God, to create it. Let us pray. Loving God, we are in awe of the gift you wish to send us, Jesus, your Son. Open our hearts and minds that we may create together a community of love to welcome him. As we prepare for his coming, we especially ask that you help us envision and make peace in our home 
in our neighborhoods, in our world. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us now pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to all your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. And from ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name who attempts to hold, take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the land of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. The psalm for this morning is taken from Psalm 80. 
Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us light that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. 
It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, everyone. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, according to the church, which means it's New Year's Day for us. I don't know about you, but I am ready for a new year. It's New Year's Day for us because our new year does not begin with a ball dropping in Times Square or even a peach dropping in Atlanta. Our new year begins with preparing ourselves to welcome Jesus in the flesh among us in just a few weeks. 2020 has been tough, hasn't it? That's an understatement. I mean, really tough. And before I get going, I want to say a sincere word of thank you to everyone throughout the diocese for sticking together in these tough times. Your support of one another and your sacrifices to keep one another safe, along with the work to take care of folks who have their backs against the wall is precisely what Jesus meant when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you. I'm proud of this diocese. In Mark's 13th chapter, Jesus speaks of disruption, disruption on a global scale. He says, there will be suffering and dark skies. There'll be no more moonlight and the stars will fall and litter the ground. Can you even imagine that? It seems like Jesus is reading the headlines for today with his words. We know something about disruption, don't we? Life has been changed for us profoundly over these last nine months. Everything from going to the grocery store or getting married to, to dying has been disrupted. What we formally call normalcy has been interrupted. Reading the headlines or listening to the news or even hearing Jesus' words today, this summary of events is enough to make us want to get under a blanket and hide ourselves. Or at least it's enough to make us want to hunker down or bunker up. I think I know why so many people are choosing nostalgia over reality these days. But even in Jesus' announcement about being disrupted, there's a kernel of hope for us. As sure as God is alive, there's hope. Jesus reminds us that we can partner with God to use the disruptions and interruptions of life to do the reset in life that we cannot bring about on our own. The disruption Jesus is talking about is God breaking into our status quo and making God's power and glory known. I wonder where you've seen God's power and glory breaking in over the last few months. You can always depend on God to somehow use whatever is happening in the world to show God's self. You can always bet on God to make gold out of garbage. That's why God is trustworthy. Look closely at what Jesus says in the midst of this great disruption. God is dispatching angels, is what he says. And that's what happens in disruption and tough times. That's how we see the glory and the power of God. Angels show up 
and show themselves. Have you seen any angels during this COVID-19 disruption? I certainly have. They weren't flying around, they didn't have wings or harps, but they were angels nevertheless. Messengers of God, always about God's aroundness. Maybe you've been an angel in this pandemic. Maybe you've decided to partner with God right now to bring light out of darkness and laughter out of mourning. Remember God's angel army is not only descending but ascending, which means we're thoroughly surrounded by them. And to some degree, we are those angels. That's how we make it in this disruption, to keep awake for the angels, to keep awake for those who are peacemakers, to keep awake for those who are sustaining us as we are weary, for those who remind us who we are in the eyes of God, always beloved, always valuable, possessing irrefutable dignity, all of us. That's sort of the big point of Advent after all, right there. To wake up and see what already is. By remembering Advent, we're sort of giving ourselves a four-week period to wake up so we can see and appreciate what God has done, is doing, and will do. There's nothing worse than sleeping through your blessing and then wondering, even complaining, where is God? What a pity it would be if you and I decided to be the spiritual version of Rip Van Winkle. Do you remember that story? It's a fantastic story. Rip's great claim to fame is that when he went to sleep, King George was the king. But when he woke up from his prolonged nap, George Washington had become our first president. Rip Van Winkle had slept through a great revolution. That's what Jesus is warning us about right here. Don't sleep through God's revolution of love and of mercy and of generosity and of self-sacrifice. Jesus says even the fig tree has the good sense to know that the season is changing and that the season changing requires us to stretch and to receive the benefit of the changing season. Things are changing all around us. America's changing. Georgia is changing, the economy is changing, church is changing, and has changed. How are you coping with all of that? The hard part about change is not necessarily the, the fact of change, but the feeling and the reality of loss that is associated with change. Some folks are disoriented by all of this. Some are terribly frightened. Some are so frightened that they're taking up words and behaviors that make it hard to see that they trust God or that they are followers of Jesus Christ. So what does Jesus declare in the face of disruption? Well, he tells us the truth about disruption. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He respects us too much for that. He says things will pass away because that's the nature of things. Most of what we see and hold on to truthfully is temporal. We are here for a season and then gone. Great societies and civilizations rise and plateau and then are surpassed by another group. That's the reality of life. Things pass away. These facts mustn't depress us. In a strange way, really, even the reality of disruption helps us. There is a blessed urgency in disruption. And that should produce in us a depth of appreciation for what is happening right now, for what we have right now, the life we have, the love we have. Disruption can help us savor our blessings in a way that the status quo can't. My mother-in-law, she lives in Gainesville, Florida, and as you know, we've had an incredible storm season there this year. Routinely, Florida has been threatened by severe and disruptive weather events. Routinely, they have to think in terms of what is precious and what is expendable. What will they take with them when the call goes out to evacuate, and what will they live without and leave behind? The effect this has had on many folks is that they have decided to live lighter. They keep their focus on what is durable, truly precious. 
Jesus declares that in disruption, the word of God is durable and precious. I hope that's clear for all of us. God is not a part of our story. We are a part of God's story. And God's word, which is God's breath, which is God's life force, which is love, is the most durable force in the universe. And everything that is not love is made of inferior materials. And everything that is not love is eroding and corroding right now and will ultimately collapse under its own weight. Only God's word is enduring. Only God's way is enduring. That's a positive piece for us to be mindful of in disruption. We're forced to choose, you and I, right now, what is precious and what is expendable. So yes, things pass away, but God is not a thing. God is eternal, enduring, and effective. So what shall we say, as the Apostle Paul said, if God is for us, who can be against us? The good news is that in all this disruption and all this interruption is that there is nothing, not life or death, nor things present, nor things in the future, nor any power of any kind that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Let us now recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Rob and Don, our bishops, our rector, Winston, our vestry and parish leaders, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Brian, our governor, Patricia, the mayor of Stone Mountain, 
that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor particularly the following names, the Edwards family, Joyce, Kathy P, David, Wayne, Dwayne, Kniz, Shahid, Alando, Lois, Rick, the people of South Sudan, Trevon, Danita, Basmati, Floyd, and Christine, Misha, and Phyllis, Dorothy, George, Annie, Ruth, Doreen, Reese, Jack F, Ladon, Amanda, Brad, Morris, Ding, Marlene, Deneen, Jonathan, Anne, Carol, Peg, Joanne, Bill, Steve and Susan, Chris, April, Linda, Don, Shaista, Suleiman, Navid, Madison, Ardanis and Edna, Royan, Shri, Yvonne, Victor, Ricky, Bob, Howard, Maureen, Jennifer, Yannick, Dennis, Fatima, Barbara, Beverly, Heather Y. And for all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievously unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, Advent blessing. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await 
make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer, at his second advent, be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Greet one another in joy and peace. <laughs> go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah thanks be to god hallelujah hallelujah watching our video today. At St. Michael's, we are finding new ways to practice fellowship 
with one another and would love for you to continue to join us. Please like us on Facebook, visit our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find the links in the description on this video below. See you next time and God bless you.